Ecosystem Interactions In an ecosystem, numerous interactions occur all the time. Aboriginals call these interactions connections. These connections indicate that when something alters in an ecosystem, the alterations will have an, have an effect on other parts of the ecosystem. For example, when a drought occurs, plants that are not suited to live in these conditions die. And organisms that may depend on these um, plants may, ha may have trouble surviving also. Biotic interactions. Organisms in a community interrelate with one another in many ways. Three main ways are, the, are through competition, predation, and symbiosis. Competition. Competition is an interaction between two or more organisms competing for the same resource in a given environment. Competition can occur between members of the same species. For example, there are about 30 great egrets and about the same number of snowy egrets in this picture, but there are also white pelicans in the picture. They're all competing for food and water. Predation. Predation transpires when one organism eats another organism to obtain energy. Prey animals are aptly adapted to avoid being eaten. For example, a porcupine's quills protect it from its predator. Many predators have sharp eyesight, a keen sense of smell, or both. Basically, an ideal set of abilities. These skills are useful for hunting. Symbiosis. Symbiosis is a close interaction between two different species in which members of one species live in, on, or near members of other species. There are three main types of symbiosis. Types of symbiosis. Mutualism. Commensalism. And parasitism. Mutualism. Mutualism is a biological interaction that is beneficial in bo to both parties. Most mutualisms are facultative, meaning the partners can successfully live apart. However, some mutualisms are so intimate that the in interacting species can no longer live without each other. They have a mutually obligation. Many mutualisms are fascinating in their details and shared usefulness. Both species benefit from their symbiotic relationship. Commensalism. Commensalism is a type of biological relationship in which one species benefits from an, uh, from an interaction. While the whole species is neither positively or negatively affected to any tangible degree. Parasitism. A relationship between two species where one species benefits at the expense of other species without killing it. This picture shows that the mosquito is taking blood from us, but we don't really like get affected by it. So yeah. Characteristics of populations. As a population grows, each individual gets a smaller share of the resources in, it, in the area. Eventually, the number of birds will equal the number of deaths and the population is in equilibrium. In other words, the population stays the same throughout the course of time. Carrying capacity. Carrying ca ca capacity is a maximum number of individuals that an ecosystem can support without reducing its ability to support future generations of the same species. If a population exceeds its carrying capacity for a long time, it usually harms its environment. Now if you would take a look at this part of the picture, this part, this part of the picture shows that 
um, after the ban of killing wild elephants, the population has um, increased substantially. And but after a while, um, the population has decreased substantially because of the substantial increase that was over the carrying capacity for this type of organism. Factors that affect populations in ecosystems. Various combinations of abiotic and biotic factors cause populations to increase or decrease. In a healthy, properly functioning ecosystem, limiting factors prevents an increase in the number of organisms in a population or prevents them from moving into new habit habitats. Abiotic limiting factors include the amounts of sunlight, water, soil, and air natural disturbances and human disturbances. Biotic limiting factors include competition among organisms for resources, presence of predators, reliance on other organisms for survival, and the presence of disease-causing or organisms. For an ecosystem to be sustainable, none of the populations in the community can exceed its carrying capacity by very much or very long. If all the populations remain at their carrying capacity, the ecosystem can usually be maintained. The goal of sustainability is to meet the needs of the individuals without affecting the ability of future generations to meet their needs. 